if you live out your assignment as the believer in Christ, you will win. If you live your life as the believer in Christ, Satan always comes to verify whether that Christ consciousness is still in you. If you lose the Christ consciousness, you will live a defeated life. And sometimes he will allow you to lose the Christ consciousness, then get into self-consciousness. I have an uncle somewhere. It's impossible for me to fail. My uncle is now the chairman of this board. And you will find out that you will fail so woefully. But when you say it doesn't matter what human connection I have, Christ is my anchor. Now you understand the song that our precious worship team were singing. Christ. Koinonia is rooted upon Christ. This is why it will not fail. Rooted upon Christ. Jesus Christ, the chief cornerstone. There is a mysterious cornerstone that backs and defends this vision. The jealousy of God as an investment was made upon this project. Hallelujah. The believer in Christ. Well, I don't know about you, but as for me, I've chosen my reality. There are certain things I will fight the fight of faith to see that it never happens in my life. Number one, I will never die the death of a fool. It is a personal revelation I've had. Number two, that every mountain that stands before me in the name of Jesus, it must give way. Number three, I will not beg while I'm serving the purposes of God. No. Now, don't be angry at what I believe. You have a way of defining what you believe. So if my list looks a bit stretchy for you, it's between me and God. It is unto you in this kingdom according to your faith. Are we together now? But the believer in Christ, yea, I walk, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall, help me, I shall, there is evil, but I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. They comfort me. If I were not in Christ, maybe one enchantment of darkness would have just blown me off. And one day you just wake up and start coughing. My head, my head. And that's the end of it. But not when I'm in Christ. When I'm asleep, he's awake. He doesn't sleep. Doesn't sleep. Doesn't sleep. Who is believing what I'm telling you? Yes. The next time you are shaking somebody, carry the consciousness. Don't just say, I'm expecting the person to shake and fall. That's not what I'm talking about. You are a blessing. Your hands are... If I ask you to give me five naira cash, you will not use your mouth to remove it, your hand. So when you are shaking people, see to it that they are not just touching you. They are touching you and the Christ. Something should happen to them. Oh, my friend, shake me. God bless you. And the person says, Amen. And carries that hand. Not idolizing it, but based on that consciousness, you deposited God. And the person may not know. He will just go somewhere and find out that he laid it on his document and because you see anywhere the ark is it works as designed and if it finds itself in the house of obed edom even in three months it can produce abundance the name of jesus are we together someone tells you i've been having all kinds of dreams and these things are demonic and then the Lord sends you to that house to visit. They just give you one room. You may not know why God brought you there. You thought you just went to greet your uncle. He knows that if you don't go there, the devil will destroy them because they are bankrupt of intelligence. And the night you lie down on that bed, those spirits will come as usual. But it will be like a shining light from that house. What has been introduced in this house again? And you are sleeping. You are not even praying. But you have programmed your spirit to know that you and God cannot fail. Are we together now? And they wake up and tell you, look, we have a testimony. This is the first time in 10 years our father is sleeping sound. He wakes up fighting in the night. You wake up more tired. And you say, really? They say, please tell us what happened. And you tell them, I have, it. I have the answer. Let's go to the Bible. The Bible tells me that if I am in Christ, I've been raised up with him. God's servant, Bishop Oedipo, will call it a far above mentality. It is true. Far above. You've heard me, and, and I say it humorously, but I really mean it. That if God wants to bless 10 people in Koinonia this night, my prayer is for the remaining nine. The remaining nine. The remaining nine. The remaining nine. He is jealous over me. 
I am God's investment. Carry your presence everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me. Just a God. He will not suffer my foot to be moved. I carry your presence everywhere. You are mine. Your mind is so full of me. hands on your head in one minute and pray I am victorious in Christ victorious in Christ don't mind what the devil is telling you don't let the devil tell you don't 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 let this church gibberish ignore him and you declare hold on to your profession of faith your profession of faith your profession of faith I reject a victim mentality I reject limitation in Christ victorious helped by God access to mercy access to victory access to favor access to dominion access to power access to the resources of heaven one minute you are praying Satan you are a liar take away those negative thoughts from my mind I cast down every imagination from a faulty background, I am still in Christ. Defeated in yesterday, I am still in Christ. Position for greatness. Position for greatness. Position for victory. An ambassador, a witness. On fire for Jesus. Commanding the resources of heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Please sit down. What's the one thing holding you back from living the life God has called you to? I bet it's fear. Fear that whispers, you're not enough, you can't do it, you'll fail. But what if I told you, God never intended for you to live in fear? In fact, he has given you everything you need to overcome it. Today, we're going to talk about how to break free from the chains of fear and walk in the boldness that God has already placed inside of you and it all starts with one thing, faith. Let's dive in. Fear is something we all face. It can be paralyzing, overwhelming, and even make us doubt God's promises. But here's what we need to understand. Fear is not from God. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Let that sink in for a moment. Fear is not your identity. Power, love, and a sound mind are. Fear doesn't get the final say in your life. God's power does. I know some of you are watching this right now feeling like fear has gripped every area of your life. Fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of the unknown. But here's the good news. Jesus is greater than your fear. When you feel anxious or afraid, you're not meant to carry that weight alone. In fact, Jesus invites us in Matthew chapter 11 verse 28 come to me all you who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest fear can weigh you down it can make you feel like you're carrying a burden too heavy to bear but God is saying come to me give that fear to me and I'll give you peace when you put your trust in God you start to realize that he's bigger than your fears Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 reminds us, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God is literally promising that you don't have to do it alone. He's holding you up, even when the fear feels overwhelming. What if, instead of focusing on your fears, you started focusing on God's promises? Practical Steps to Overcome Fear so, how do we practically overcome fear in our daily lives? Here are three key steps. Number one, meditate on God's Word. The Bible is full of promises that combat fear. 
One of my favorites is Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Read scriptures like this daily. Remind yourself of God's truth, and fear will lose its grip on your heart. Number two, pray boldly. Prayer is not just asking God for things. It's an exchange. When you come to God in prayer, give him your fear and receive his peace. Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 to 7 tells us, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Number 3. Take action in faith. Fear tries to freeze you in place, but faith moves you forward. Whatever God is calling you to do, do it despite the fear. That's where real courage comes from. Not the absence of fear, but moving forward through it with the strength of God by your side. In conclusion, listen, I don't know what fears you're facing right now, but I do know this. God has already given you the power to overcome them. You don't have to live in fear anymore. You can live boldly, confidently, and courageously because God is with you. Remember Romans chapter 8, verse 31. If God is for us, who can be against us? So, don't let fear have the final word in your life. Instead, let faith rise up. Let God's promises lead the way. If this message has touched you, don't keep it to yourself. Share it with someone who needs to hear it. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more content that will strengthen your walk with Christ. Let's break free from fear together.